let's talk about my new project. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, got a bright sunny day here in Texas. Experiencing some pretty good weather for us. Finally got a break in uh, the high heat. But I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce you to uh, the new project. This is my uh, 1986 Mazda B2000. This is a LX. So it has a few nice features, lacks other nice features that I wish it had. Introducing a new truck experience, the all new 1986 Mazda B2000 LX. At $69.95, it's a unique combination of luxury and sportiness. Standard features include radials, chrome wheels and chrome rear step bumper, plus bucket seats, a five-speed tachometer, and an AM FM stereo. What a luxury to get all this sportiness for just $69.95. $1,100 less than Toyota and Nissan sport trucks. Mazda LX, experience it. I'm going to have a whole new video series on this pickup. Um, so just a quick level set on why I bought this. I've wanted a Mazda B2000, B2200, B2600 since I was a little boy. I always wanted one of these trucks. And uh, <clears throat> had opportunities to buy them at different points in my life. And for whatever reason, just didn't you know one of those stupid decisions that you make as a young man or whatever just didn't do it oh, idiot and uh well the opportunity came up and i took it and here i am it is not perfect but it's mine it's paid off it runs really well it has very few issues, um, and I'll go through a couple of those really quick. But <clears throat> it's overall, it's, it's in good shape. Uh, I won't say it's in perfect shape, obviously. It's been used. It's been well-loved, and I'll show you some things. But it's got working AC. It's still an R12 system. Super cold. I mean, really cold. And that's the thing I loved about R12 back in the day. The bed is in pretty good shape. I've done a little bit here and there. Uh, there was some surface rust. You can see where I found a close color um, to uh, get this treated, I guess. Um, I am gonna put a uh, roll-on bed liner. Uh, I think it's probably gonna go with Herculiner uh, and uh, get that done in the fall when it's not a million degrees and uh, wrap that particular thing up one just to protect it but two because you know i just think having a bed liner would be nice to have in this pickup let's get inside really quick before i show you under the hood um so the interior is in pretty good okay sort of not really condition the uh you can see where the the door panel here has been well used I will say, I know why this happened. You know, if you're taller or you wear boots or whatever, when you get in and out of this truck, your left foot tends to catch the door panel right there. And I guarantee you, just over the years, that's what happened to that. I intend to recover these myself. I'm gonna have to fix or make a new panel here. I'm thinking about going with plaid or houndstooth. Uh, having a combination of like a vinyl top section and a uh, vinyl bottom section or maybe a carpeted bottom section with a central like plaid right here to take the place of just straight vinyl. You guys let me know what you think. Plaid, houndstooth, or tweed like you see here. It's gonna be one of the three. Don't give me any dumb ideas because I'll just ignore your comment or make fun of you. All right. <clears throat> so the driver's seat, well loved. Uh, I do have the handle for that. I did get a, I actually got a bid to get this done professionally. The whole interior, get the seats recovered, door panels redone, and holy cannoli, it's a little bit more than I thought it was going to be. So 
Gonna end up doing it all DIY, which is, I guess that's good for, for content. Um, the guy that had it before me, so the guy said I wasn't gonna count, he did a couple things. Um, he cleaned up the, the, the central dash, unfortunately broke that one uh, vent. And to his credit, um, the screws for it go this way. So to get to that vent, you actually have to dismantle most or all of the entire dash to be able to pull that vent out. Um, of all the vents to break, if he'd broken this or that, would have been totally okay. But man, why did he have to break that one? That one is first off very hard to find and secondly, holy cow, people are proud of it. So yeah, there's that. Anyways, um, the old Mazda steering wheel was pretty well not a steering wheel anymore. So this is just a cheap Amazon special steering wheel I grabbed um, just to get the job done. I had to get this thing through vehicle inspections and it had to have a working horn. And uh, it didn't at the time when I bought it. The horn did not work, so now I have a working horn. Um, as I mentioned before, the AC works, works really well, really, really well. This has got a five speed, which on this 90 horsepower behemoth, <laughs> is actually it's good and bad uh that you know you, you end up there's not a lot of power i'm just saying man it needs a turbo like for real and luckily mazda did have a 626 turbo with it was the same engine uh as this so a lot of that stuff is bolt on the ford probe from that same era same engine they had a turbo model so there is a way to convert this engine to a turbo engine. Um, and and there's a couple other YouTubers who've done it and they swear it is exactly what this engine needs. Just needs a little bit of boost. So don't all engines need a little boost? Anyways, so that's, uh, that's potentially a plan. The other idea is to go rotary. Yes, I am a rotary guy. I love rotary engines. And if I can find like a 12A or a 13B, um, I'm gonna go that route. And with that engine in this pickup, as light as it is, I actually don't need to go turbo. So I could leave it in a, and later put a bolt, bolt you know, bolt to turbo on, but you know, future me problem. Uh, this is an addition that I made uh, to get a fast charger uh, set up and uh, Flake Garage, another channel that I'll link down below uh, has a guide on how to get this done. Very easy, very easy. I did a little bit different than the way he did it, um, but essentially the same thing. Alpine head unit, it's okay. Um, I'm an Alpine fan. I really like Alpines, especially, you know, growing up in, I'm a Gen Xer, so this was the, these are the head units, Alpine, Nakamichi, and uh, Kenwood, Sony, and all those Oh, you know, all the name brand companies that you're used to hearing about, this was this would be what you want. Except, you know, I kind of got spoiled on having Apple Car Talk or whatever it's called, um, touch screen. So this is a double DIN, and I think I'm eventually going to replace this head unit and put a double DIN unit in there so I can have... Car play or car talk, or whatever it's called. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, those of you who are uh, familiar with it. Passenger seat looks really good. Um, it's got some stains in it, but fabric cushion is perfect. Um, and let me let me back up a minute here and talk about one more thing, and then we're gonna cut, return to the seats, and then we'll get into the hood. So this is a 3D printed cup holder. This truck. Uh, lacks real cup holders. It does have some, <laughs> if you want to call them that, right there. That is not a cup holder. That is, they don't work. You just don't even bother. It's great if you're parked, but forget about it. So uh, this is a 3D printed um, cup holder that I designed 
um, design. I did it in uh, Tinkercad, so it's pretty rough, but it does the job. And, uh, you know, the important thing is it can hold, uh, you know, 44 ounce or 60 ounce uh, massive jug of cola. And that's, that's all that matters to me. Um, anyhow, back to the seats really quick. So in checking to get these reupholstered, it, even if I just got these reupholstered, it was actually a shocker as to how expensive it was going to be. Um, I guess I was just, I guess I expected something different and, uh, it was very, very high. So I am, I am only notionally entertaining the idea of trying to reupholster these seats myself. But man, I've sewn stuff before and I suck. I just don't, I don't think I trust myself to do a good enough job to, to even attempt doing that. So I'm probably gonna end up getting some racing buckets to put in here. And that seems to be the thing most folks do with, with the B2000, B2200. It's just go with a different seat. I hate that, but I like it at the same time. These seats, especially, man, there's that right there is such a comfortable seat. And I know that if I could get this redone uh, and, you know, have new cushioning and so forth, I'd be very comfortable in this seat. It's just that, I mean, literally, if I buy brand new buckets for this thing, that is cheaper than getting these seats reupholstered. And they would need to match, obviously, you know? Um, and I'd want to get them both done at the same time because they can't match this exactly. In case you're wondering, I'm trying to fill you in on the whole the whole thing here so that you understand why I'm not just going to get one done. They both need to be done at the same time so that the fabric will match. And it just, I don't know if any of y'all know down, you know, comment down below. Let me know if you have any other ideas. Um, the nice thing about going with modern racing style buckets is you get a lot more bolster support. Because when you're turning, you know, get this landslide that's occurring right here, it's making right hand turns in this pickup. Not great feel like I'm going to fall out and uh, end up holding on to the steering wheel because I don't have any other support. Uh, so, and I, <laughs> you're probably thinking, well, of course you're holding on to the steering wheel. What I mean is I'm holding on to the steering wheel, like pulling on it instead of just gently rolling through it. So that's enough for the interior. Otherwise, you know, it's in really good condition, you know, new carpet, new seats, new panels. Good to go. Good as new. Oh, new vent, new vent. Yeah, if anybody has a line on one of those, and I mean, I don't mean just like any line. I've already been checking. I've been scouring the internet. But if you know, if you have one, you're interested in selling me, let me know. But don't try to gouge me because I'll just end up doing something different. I'll, I'll 3D print something before I pay the prices that I'm seeing online for that one vent. Just saying. Let's get to the meat and potatoes, or in this case, potato. Uh, this is uh, this is a two liter Mazda, and uh, it's already got the Weber conversion, which is the thing you do on these. The intake has been, you know, plugged. Uh, it's not shaved or anything like that. That said, that doesn't bother me at all, at all. Um, at this point, I just need function over form. Uh, it performs okay. I mean, you know, 90 horsepower, man. Uh, my, my Buell makes more power than that. So I could put the Buell engine in here and, and be better off than what this thing's doing. It's, uh, it's a reliable engine though. I mean, it, it's lasted this long and it's doing the thing, baby. So I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, it's, Got some deletage going on over here with the old vacuum system and all the solenoids involved with that. They did not uh, imagine as a guy, but the, the in-betweener dude um, that I bought this from, uh, probably didn't feel comfortable cutting the harness apart. And I don't, you know, that's fine. I can probably use some of these uh, for for some uh, voltage, uh, for maybe an accessory I wanna add. And there's a couple things I'm thinking to that end. Um, brakes are good. They're old, but they're good. Uh, they're they're still in good condition. And uh, you may have noticed the astute among you 
may have realized that there is no power steering unit in here and that is one thing of all the things I wish this truck had was power steering. I forgot. I grew up on a manual steering uh, car. I had a Mazda 323. Matter of fact, it was the same color as this. Same color. Um, but the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, I, I, I would really like to have power steering. And uh, I've got an idea of what I want to do. And I'm thinking I'm, I could go and buy a um, used power steering unit. Uh, that fits this pickup and it would bolt right in for around 300 ish dollars somewhere in there it's the whole thing um steering box and everything so that's potentially an idea but the more modern approach is to adapt a an electric power steering unit to this and uh there's some guys that are doing it on uh, some of their classic vehicles and I mean, one finger steering with no drag or, or any uh, draw, sorry, on the engine. So I think, I think if I can do it, I've got to figure out how much space I've actually got. I've got, dire I've got some space going down in that direction. And if I could get the motor to hang down that way and build some bracketry to make this all work, I think I can do it. So anyways, I'll let you know on that. Um, but that's pretty much it y'all. Uh, it's been a good truck. Um, initially it was burning some oil and that turned out to be a bad PCV. So I replaced the PCV and the oil cons con uh, consumption quit. I don't burn any more oil. So that's good. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll go ahead and wrap the video up here. Look for more content on the B2000. This truck is, is meant to haul the Buell. To different locations including the dragon yes it'll be a long arduous trick trek in this little pickup but it'll do it i'm not worried about it um and uh other stuff with this truck rims are the other thing that'll be happening rims i've got some rims picked out uh but that's going to be in a little bit again thank you all for your time until next time peace out and keep it between the ditches